Hey everyone, Matt Bailey here from Rochester, New York with my dog Diesel. You are watching TJV on YouTube. Enjoy. And our time at Quality Inn has come to an end. It was a quality stay, quality room. Actually, it was very nice. If you want to stay anywhere in Hinton, Alberta, I would recommend this place. It's the only motel I've been to in Hinton, but it was pretty nice. Pet friendly. They didn't even charge me the pet fee. Chevy, you stayed for free. Shh. I saw that on the invoice after they after I got back to the truck. I was looking through all the the charges. Like I always, I always go over all my invoices and stuff. Make sure I don't get charged for anything I shouldn't. And then I realized, wait a second, didn't they say there was a pet fee? I guess not. I guess they don't have a pet fee here. They don't have a pet fee. So uh, it was sixty six dollars per night. Came out to a total of one hundred and forty three dollars after taxes and stuff. And it was good, really good, really comfortable. I, I enjoyed it. So now it's time to get back to work. It's time to get on the road. We gotta be in Langley, British Columbia tonight. We have 835 kilometers, just over 500 miles to go. And uh, we're gonna be going over the Coquihalla, which is the highway through hell, if hell was frozen over. There's actually a TV show that they, that they have based on this highway that we're gonna go over today. It's called Highway Through Hell. So that should be fun. I've already looked at the, they have live view because there's so much bad weather up on the high mountain pass that they actually have like live cameras up there that show you what the weather's like and it looks bad. It, it looks like a high mountain pass in January. It's not snowing, but the roads are uh, kind of snow covered and there's probably about 10 feet of snow pushed up on each side of the road. It's, it's gonna be a little interesting. We've got lots of washer fluid. We're set and ready. Are you ready? Let's go tackle some mountains. Chevy, when's the last time you saw the mountains? Oh, it's been a while, has it? It's been a while. Yeah, I forget what they look like. They're really big bumps, right? They're really big hills. They're more than bumps. And they're rocky. That's why they're called the Rocky Mountains. Whoa! Very excited. Very exciting. And off we go. A whole day's adventures ahead of us. In 200 meters, turn right on Trans Canada Highway. Oh, you're highway back, are you? Then, turn right in 20 meters. You know, it's nice having a whole day just quiet. Not Karen yelling at me. So I didn't live stream. Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to get your hopes up. <laughs> I guess you knew that already. I locked myself out of my room right as the countdown happened. I went out to check my truck at about like 20 and a quarter to, I think it was 20 to 12. And I uh, went out to make sure my truck doors were locked, right? I just wanted to double check because I'm paranoid because I wanted to go to bed right after the countdown was done, right? So uh, <laughs> I went out to check my Turn truck right. and I got back to my room and realized I had locked myself out. I left my key card in the room. So I went to the front desk and I waited there for what felt like a half hour. It was about a half hour. She came out about 10 minutes after midnight. So I missed the countdown. And I missed New Year's. So I had to uh, re-watch it after on YouTube. So I got to see some fireworks. I was so sad. I was frustrated. For half an hour, I'm wandering around the, mo the motel. Couldn't find one employee anywhere. I mean, it was midnight. I get it, but half an hour? And then when she came back, I, I, I said, hey, I've been, I've been waiting here for a little while. It's been about a half hour. And she gave me attitude. <laughs> she gave me attitude. She's like, you haven't been waiting here for a half hour? I'm like, yeah, it's been about a half hour. Like, no, you've only been here for about 20 minutes or so. Continue on this road for 24 kilometers. <laughs> like, 
Well, I wasn't counting exactly down to the minute, 20 minutes, 30, whatever. I missed the countdown. It was sort of like the whole reason I got a room here was to watch the countdown. That's why I'm still awake. I would have gone to bed earlier if I didn't want to watch the countdown. She was right mad. Oh, moody. I talked to the management this morning. I said, eh, she's a little moody last night and like, I locked myself, locked myself out of the room and she's all ticked off. She had to go make a, another key card for my room and it like, takes her two seconds. But I guess she was mad that I told her I was waiting there for about a half hour because she knows she's not supposed to leave her her front desk open for that long. And anybody could have just walked in and taken whatever they wanted, I guess. I don't know what she was doing, but that was my experience. The rest of the experience was fantastic. I'd still recommend staying there. The manager said apparently he's had other complaints about the same person. And uh, it's becoming a trend, so he was going to take care of it. Whatever he does take care of it, that's that's his choice, but I guess it, it was a great place. They had a heated pool. I went for a swim yesterday, had a hot tub, went and sat in the hot tub for a bit. I read a bunch of my new book. And I had a Harry Potter marathon. Harry Potter was on TV, so I figured why not? We watched uh, uh, the first three: The Philosopher's Stone, The Chamber of Secrets, and Escape from Azkaban. And the next ones were on today. The Goblet of Fire and whatnot, but as you can tell, we have other plans for today. So do you see the mountains in front of us already? Open your eyes, they're right there. Beautiful, isn't it? We gotta get to the other side of those. Well, I think I went through most of my washer fluid already. I was stuck behind a truck that was doing 30 under the speed limit for an excessive amount of time until I could finally, finally make my way past them. Welcome back to the two-lane highways of Canada in the winter. When you're following someone in this weather, it's just like you have to keep the washer fluid pretty much constantly flowing or you get covered in, you know, road dirt. I'm so frustrated, but hey, we got around him. He was one of those guys that, uh, you know, when you try to pass him, he speeds up. So, you know, it's like 90 kilometers an hour here, so he's doing like 60 to 70 until there's a passing lane, right? So I pull out to pass, no problem, the roads aren't that bad. He speeds up. It seems like those people just exist everywhere, don't they? Aren't those just like the worst kind of people? The worst kind of drivers? Makes you wonder, like, are you doing it on purpose or do you just not realize it? I think they're doing it on purpose. Just to upset me, so I talk about them on my vlog. We're not quite in British Columbia yet. We're very close. We're in, uh, what is it, Jasper National Park? Is that what it's called? It's still a beautiful area of the city, uh, of the of the country. Jasper is a big tourist destination. I think you can do some skiing, snowmobiling, hiking stuff there. If I had an endless supply of money, I would have probably just stayed in Jasper at one of their fancy, expensive motels and then rented a snowmobile. That would have been fun. But, alas, we are not quite made of money just yet. Still trying to figure out how to get that done. Is it 90 here again? Okay, now it's 90. Now I'm the slow one. Good thing there's no one behind me.
just came up to this, uh, what seems like an accident scene? I don't know what's going on here. They're letting us through here now. Let's go see what happened. We're in British Columbia now, and it's off on the left there, down by the tracks. It looks like a train must have derailed going around the corner here or something. And they're cleaning it up. I don't know if we'll be able to see from up here, but it's... It looks like a mess down there. It's traffic control, yeah, there's a lot of CN vehicles around here. Yeah, this is a train derailment. Wow. Went around the corner here a little too fast, tipped over. Whoops a doodle. Uh, someone got fired. Hope nobody got hurt. Train derailments are can be pretty scary things. I mean that's a lot of weight. A lot of momentum. Why oh, yeah, they're moving one off the track right there. Those... Yikes. What a mess. That thing didn't just derail, that thing, that thing exploded. Wow. Oh, they're telling me to stop. Every time we come through BC, there's something like that's very dangerous for everyone to be coming through here. It doesn't matter what kind of vehicle you're in. It's a you got to be careful in the mountains. You know, once again, like I was saying when we were in northern Ontario, these two-lane highways are so dangerous. Like, look at this cliff off to the left here. No guardrails, no nothing. You know, America would at least put up a guardrail. You know they would. This is the Trans Canada. This is our version of an interstate. This is the Yellowhead Trans Canada Highway coming down from Edmonton towards Kamloops and British Columbia. It's the same thing on the number one down south. That's our interstate. Trans-Canada, same thing. And it seems like they just don't take our safety into consideration at all. It's sort of like up on the Alaskan Highway. That's up in northern BC. Huge cliffs off the side of the road. No guardrails, no nothing. Here's some guardrail around the corner. What is this? It's cement. At least it's cement. Usually it's just like flimsy little steel. You know, and I like talking about this to sort of put pressure on people. You never know who's watching, right? You never know who's watching because, like I said before, Canada, we're a very wealthy country. We're in the top seven wealthiest countries in the world. We have a GDP in the trillions. We're doing very well. Why can't we build proper highways for ourselves, right? Meanwhile, we're building roads in Indonesia, we're building roads in Afghanistan, we built a highway in Jordan for some reason recently. And we're building highways in all these other countries, like what about our highways, right? Like I, I understand the whole foreign aid thing, but come on, <laughs> come on. Anyway. I'll bring that up until somebody does something about it. You know, they don't even have to make a twin highway because building a highway through this terrain is very expensive. Very ridiculously mind-blasting expensive. I understand, I've seen the numbers. I've seen the numbers. But they could do, you know, like just widen the highway a little bit and put, a, put two lanes going each direction and put a big cement barrier down the middle. Problem solved, I don't know, if I was in charge, that's where I'd be trying to direct as much money as I could, but yeah, that's, that's just me. What do you guys think? You guys who have to drive through Canada all the time and also get to drive in the US. You, you see the US, they have a much larger budget than us. Like they, they spend a lot of money on their roads and then you come up here. What's your opinion of, the, uh, of these two? You, you think we could? I think we could. 
So I don't know who's watching right now, but kind of hold your feet to the fire a little bit here and say, hey, we could do it. Oh, we just need the willpower. And maybe a couple of people in charge of our money that would rather spend it here than over there. But we're not even up to the peak yet. We're not even close to the peak of the mountain. We're not even on the summit. We're still in the valley here. And this is what it's like in the valley. So the Coquihalla is going to be fun. We're not, we're not there yet. I'll let you know when we're there. But hopefully we see no other accidents or anything along the way. It's dangerous. So they've recently had a big snowstorm here. And look at this place, just turned it into a winter wonderland. It's just beautiful. You know, summer might be my favorite time of year, but winter is still by far the most beautiful time of year. You know, something that we get up in the north that other places don't get. You know, summertime, you can go to Mexico and have summertime all year round. It's not that special. It's just summertime. It's warm weather. Comfortable to be outside. Green grass, trees growing. You can get that anywhere. But a winter wonderland, that is something only us in the north and the northern hemisphere get to enjoy. Maybe in some places in the south, maybe in some places in some high mountain ranges and other places, but This is the main reason why I love our country so much. I wonder what it would be like to grow up in a tropical climate, never see a snowflake in your life, until you're in your 30s and you come as a tourist to visit Canada. And you see this. It must just blow their minds. It blows my mind, and I get to see it every year. I get to live in it. Now, a lot of these people probably don't want to live in a cold climate, but I say it's worth it, you know? Worth it. I like it up here. Maybe it's just in our blood, you know? We're northern people. Always have been. Sort of moved around the north, but for how many thousands and thousands of tens of thousands of years we've sort of had to live with winters I mean, you can't tell me that this is not like a, a postcard picture perfect and the two lane takes another victim got another guy in the ditch over here Looks like he, uh, like I was saying before, got a little too close to the ditch. Look at this mess. Shoot. Well, it didn't look like it was that bad. Could have been worse. This road is terrible. Terrible.
just coming into Blue River, uh, BC. I'm gonna pull in here somewhere. I need to wash my windows off. All right, we made it to the wonderful city of Kamloops, BC. Wonderful city. It is actually a very beautiful city. This is where we were gonna spend our New Year's. Kinda wish we did. This is a very nice town, but that's not how it worked out, so. Here we are now. I'm gonna grab some fuel. It's a little cheaper up here than down in Vancouver, I think. Grab some fuel here and uh, wash the headlights, wash the mirrors. Uh, grab another coffee. You know, pit stop. We still have another uh, four hours, three hours. Three hours down to Langley, and I'd like to get there uh, a decent amount of time so that we don't have to, you know, search too hard for a parking spot. I'm hoping there's going to be parking where I want to park. It's kind of risky. But it is New Year's Day, so I'm thinking that there will probably be spots available. People are still at home today with their families. Well, we made it. We're here down in Langley. Or down here in Langley, however you want to say it. Oh, I hope there's parking for us at the Chevron. On a normal day, I would say not a chance. But since it's New Year's Day, I'm hoping maybe. Maybe. Because I gotta deliver the stuff in my trailer. Meters, like to the right on 200 Street North. Gotta literally deliver it like across the street. So if I can't find any place at the uh Chevron to park at the truck stop. I'm just gonna go right to the customer and park right on the street, right in front. I know we're allowed to park there. I just prefer to park at the truck stop, if at all possible. Because there's very limited parking in the lower mainland here, and I know a lot of the employees that work at those industries and businesses park along the street as well. So they might have to walk a little further if I park there, which, hey, you got two feet in a heartbeat. That's all right, but I don't want to make them do that if I don't if I don't have to. You know what I mean? I'm a nice guy. Should be just around the corner here, Take off to the left. Slide right on 201 Street. No, Karen, we're gonna stop here at the truck stop first, and hopefully, hopefully, somebody save Trucker Josh a spot. I don't know who it would be, but. Okay, right here, off on our left. Looks like there's a spot. Looks like there's a, no, there's a bobtail in there. No, there's a spot. I think there's a spot. Oh boy, it's a dark lot. I thought it used to be more lit. Let's see if we can find a spot to park here. Well, there was one good spot left and we snagged it. Bada bing, bada boom. Here we are, okay, well, got a good spot. We're at the truck stop, so we're just going across the street tomorrow to unload the rest of this. I don't have a reload yet, which kind of concerns me a little bit, because like I've been saying, I need to get home as soon as possible because of uh, the IUI procedure for Brett, and we need to sort of be in there right on the exact right day. And that day is any time in this coming week. We don't know which day it is yet. She's got to take some tests every day, and then once she tests and she gets an okay, we got to go in the very next day, so I got to be home for that. So we'll see. They're not in the office today anyway, because it's New Year's Day, so tomorrow they'll be back in the office. And hopefully they find something for me pretty quick. They'll get me back home. I mean, we're right on the West Coast. The Pacific Ocean is just over there. So whatever freight they do find for me, it'll be going east, which is the direction I need to go. Go too far that way, you end up in China. You end up in some kind of concentration camp, getting your organs harvested. Anyways, thanks for joining me today, everybody. It was a fun day. I'm gonna go to bed, have a nice long sleep, and uh, see what happens tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe and join me then. Tomorrow, if we do get a load right away, uh, hopefully we'll get it early enough that we can get some scenery. So a little more scenery for you guys tomorrow through the mountains. We'll see. It was a uh, quite a stressful drive, white knuckle driving sometimes today, or or at some points today. But for the most part, it was a good day of driving, good day to be a truck driver. I'll see you tomorrow. Chevy, you want to say bye? Hey, come here. Come here, you want to say bye?
Well, wait, what's this? Here's a Chevy. Chevy, what do you want to say to the good people? Hi, Mom. No, say something to the good people. These people, right here, hey. These people, right here, right here. Oh, hey guys, I'm Chevy. And I'm a fluffy, handsome, good boy. Yes, you are. Let's go to bed, bud. <laughs>